Once again, I have the privilege of welcoming Andy Godfrey from Sorted Magazine and Outreach UK to bring us more movie reviews today. Hello, Andy. Great to see you. Hi, hi, Nathan. It's great to be with you. I was just saying to you off air, I need a haircut if anybody's <laughs> watching a video of this. So I apologise. I went to the barbers and it was a long queue and I, I couldn't be bothered to wait. Um, but it's great <laughs> to be on and always look forward to this time of the week very much when I'm chatting to you. Yeah. As do I. Very exciting to hear about some of the latest releases. I understand there's only been one this week, though. There have been a couple. Uh, there was a horror film came out called The Crow, which is a remake of a of a, an eighties horror film. Actually, I haven't actually seen that. There's also the one I have seen was a fifteen certificate that came out called Blink Twice, and um, much to my great surprise, right at the beginning, it actually comes with a warning that if you are offended by any of the uh, violence and its violence towards women in this film. Um, here is a website you can go to to get help. Now, I've never seen that on a movie before. In fact, although it's a 15 certificate, the violence, I've seen worse, okay? But it is basically about a millionaire inviting some pretty girls to his island for nefarious purposes. Um, it's quite well done, but, but you know, that's the only one that's out. So I'm not really sure it would be much interest <laughs> of any of our listeners, but... Um, that's the only one that, that's out at the moment. Yeah, the new one. So okay. we're really stuck with what's in the charts at the moment. Uh, there's not much new coming out this weekend either. We seem to be in a bit of a a, a bit of a rut at the moment. Um, with a bit with of a lull in the movie industry. Yeah, and I think it's because they're they're still hoping to capitalise on the new Alien film, mm. uh, things like Inside Out Two, even though it's now available to watch at home, uh, are still in the charts. Um, some of the big summer films, but also so many re-releases of films. So this weekend, for example, not only is cinema... Sh- um, we'll talk about cinemas in a moment. Uh, not only is cinema showing Star Wars films back, they're also showing the two Terminator films, the first two Terminator films really? um, back. So Arnie is back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said, oh, I'll be back, but he is back this weekend. So you get a chance to see those on the big screen. Um uh, but other than that, really, we are waiting now, I think. And I always find the autumn period interesting, Nathan, because there's a whole load of big films scheduled for the autumn. But it's always interesting to see which ones they hold back for Christmas. Ah, uh, yes. So we're not quite sure yet. We're looking at the schedule. There are some big films lined up. They might well hold one or two of them back, you know, for, for the Christmas period. So we'll mm. wait and see. But genuinely speaking, uh, we we are we. Went, I know we went through the box office top ten last week, and uh, it is um, not a lot of new ones than this week. So really, we can almost talk more about um, what's on at home to watch, you know, as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds good. What what sort of films then are in the top three at the moment? I don't know if it's changed okay. since last time, has it? Not much. So yeah. as I predicted last week, the new number one is Alien Romulus. Uh, and this is this film which is set between Alien, which was 1979, and Aliens, which was the mid-80s. Um, it's a standalone story, but it's got references to the first Alien film. It's got references to the Aliens film. So it's sort of stuck in the middle. So it's both a prequel and a sequel, which is something I've never quite seen done before. This I can't remember anybody doing something like that before. Basically, a group of young kids are uh, working in a mining colony on a an off-world planet. They want to escape. Um, they notice that flying above their heads in outer space is an abandoned space station. So they go up to this space station in the hope of being able to find, you know, transport to get away, uh, long-range transport to get away. What they do find is that the space station is absolutely crammed full with aliens who proceed to attack them one at a time. It, it, it's entertaining. I did say to you I thought it would be the number one film, and it is. Um, so so that's number one. Number two is uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, which is this irreverent, blood so gory, quite funny, <laughs> I have to say, uh, film, which, um, you know, you've got Deadpool... Um, looking talking to the audience basically and, and as i said to you there's like there is a great moment when it comes to the, why do we have to save the world listening to madonna you know um <laughs> and, and the soundtrack's quite good um so that's in at number two 
and then I'm just double checking the number three, uh, Nathan, on my list, which is, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Deadpool and Wolverine is number three. It ends with us as number two, which is this film we talked about last week. Nice. Based on the book, young girl falls in love with a guy, relationship comes to an end. Years later, she meets him again, but she's now married. Will she go leave her husband and go off with him? Her husband thinks she will, so he starts beating her up. Um, it's too long, as I said to you, you know, too long. <laughs> but those are the top, those are the top three films. Um, so yeah, brand new number one with Alien Romulus coming in at number one. And as I say, it's it's not bad. This film that I mentioned earlier, Blink Twice, um, is now in at number four. So it's doing quite well, despite the warning that you mm. get at the start of the film, which I, I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Interesting. But that's good. Well, it's actually interesting to note that, uh, for example, you're talking about Alien. That is quite an old franchise. It's been around since I don't know when. When did the, when was the first one that came out? The first one was 1979. 79. So 79. A... Yeah, I think that. So what happened with Alien was that they they did Alien came out was a big big hit. I mean, I remember seeing it for the first time and being totally overwhelmed by it. Still iconic, I mean, isn't it? It is. There's a scene with the chest burster, you know. In fact, my memory of that is that. There were two girls sat in front of me who were obviously so shocked by what we were watching. One said to, I remember one said to her, would you like an opal fruit? <laughs> it's sweet, you know. um, then they did Aliens, which was really good. They went back to the planet where they, they found the alien and, and, and um, you know, aliens had taken over. Then there was Alien 3, which was a highly controversial film. David Fincher's director debut. Uh, it told the story of uh, an alien in a mining, again in a mining colony. Then they did Aliens Four, which was all about cloning aliens. And then there were, do you remember the, do you know of the Predator series? No. So Predator was an Arnold Schwarzenegger film, which featured an invisible monster in the jungles of South Africa, and Arnold Schwarzenegger had been sent in with a team of crack troops to kill this predator that they had been discovered in the jungle, but it was invisible. Um, and they made a couple of these films, uh, predator films. And then they did a couple of films where the aliens met the predator. So you had this, this alien, ugly, horrible, you know, monster attacking this invisible, ugly, horrible monster. They did a couple of those. Then there was a couple of alien prequels which weren't very good they were called prometheus and they were called covenant um they were about they were supposed to be about the origin of the alien but in actual fact they i've even forgotten them actually i mean i saw them both at the cinema but nobody really liked them they, they were big flops so alien is quite a as you say an old franchise but it seems to keep coming back and back and back because the design of the alien, which is designed by a Swedish guy called Giga, who was really into designing weird and wonderful monsters and stuff. And the design is really quite interesting. For example, the alien has a mouth within a mouth, you know? So he opens his mouth and another mouth comes out. And, and the design, and it's six foot tall, and, you know, so it is an old franchise. But, you know, it's like the Star Wars films are doing so well in the cinemas at the moment. I mean, they're yeah. reissuing them all. People will pack cinemas to see the Terminator films this weekend. Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah, and can I just say about that before I forget, uh, for anybody listening who's thinking of going to the cinema this weekend, maybe to see one of the family films like Inside Out 2, or I'm going to say it, Harold and the Purple Crayon, <laughs> um, tomorrow is National Cinema Day. Really? And all cinemas are Odeon, Cine World, and other cinemas are offering all tickets at half price. Wow. All right. So it's National Cinema Day tomorrow. So if you are looking at the box, top, box office top 10 and thinking, oh, I'd like to see the new Alien film or I'd like to see the new romantic film It Ends With Us or I'd like to see Inside Out 2 or whatever, go tomorrow because it's half price uh, to go to the cinema tomorrow. Oh, uh, on Saturday, yeah, National Cinema Day. Interesting. That's that's very cool. Actually, coming back to those uh, that thing you were saying about the franchises, there are some, like you say, like Star Wars and Alien, yep. which have remained very popular. 
and they've continued to make sequels or perhaps gone back and sort of filled in gaps between sequels to make yeah, prequels. Yeah, this, this is what they've done with that. This is what they did with Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars, and particularly on Disney Plus, you've now got several Star Wars TV series, yeah, which yeah. fills in gaps between. You know, and as I think I said to you, I saw the original Star Wars, which dates me on the day it opened, and you get a scroll at the start of the film. Yeah, and, you know, long time ago in the galaxy, far, far away. Episode four, we all went, what? <laughs> yeah. um, and there are, I mean, I mean, I, I imagine in years to come, things like Harry Potter, the Harry Potter films will be, be re-shown because that's been a very successful franchise. Mm. Last year, they showed every single one of the 25 James Bond films back in cinemas. And I, I went and saw every single one of them because I'm a <laughs> huge Bond fan. And there were some that I hadn't seen you know, on the big screen. Mm. And just to say, I think with these older films like Star Wars, it is worth going to see them again on the big screen. You know, um, they were made for a big screen. Yeah. And I know our TVs are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, my brother's got a huge 58-inch TV that dominates. Wow. <laughs> you know, um, and TVs are getting bigger and bigger. But to see them on the big screen with an audience, you know, it, it, it is an experience. This is how they were meant to be seen. You do get the, the, the sound. Mm. The sound's better. You notice. I mean, when I was watching the Bond films, there's one in particular, which I really love, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, which is the one where he gets married. Mm. And I've seen that film dozens of times. I saw it for the first time on the big screen last year. And I actually noticed things in that film that I'd never seen before. You know. Um, you can't beat a big screen, can you? A proper no, you cinema can. screen it's experience, you know, Nathan, and, and as I say, the sound, the the atmosphere. So, yeah. so, so these big films. I mean, Pulp Fiction was in cinemas last weekend, celebrating its thirtieth anniversary. One that I'm hoping to see this weekend that I've never seen before, uh, and again, you may not remember this, but the original film of the Italian job is out. Nice. In so that stars Michael Caine and the great British. And that character. one's been remade, hasn't it? It has been remade. I didn't think the remake was any good, personally. But I thought the original, the original 60s, I don't know if you've ever seen the original 60s film. I think so, yeah. But it's it's really very funny. It's really, yeah. And it literally has a cliff, I'm not going to spoil it, but it, <laughs> it literally is. has a cliffhanger ending. Yes. Um, and if you people would remember that scene at the end of the Italian job, they were going to make a sequel and they were going to show how the cliffhanger was resolved. But unfortunately, the film didn't make enough money originally. Oh. And they never did make a sequel. Um, which is a shame because they had plans and off air. I'll tell you what they were, what they were if you want to know, because I don't want to spoil it for people. But um, yeah, so, so so yeah, franchises are, you know, I mean, my favorite franchise is the Bond franchise. I love the Alien franchise. I think the Harry Potter films will be be repeated and repeated and repeated. Um, I think the Lord of the Rings films have recently been in cinemas, mm -hmm. and of course, there's there's two versions of each of those films. So they I think extended the, versions, yeah. Extended versions, which I absolutely love. I mean, yeah, I, I think actually it, it added quite a lot. Sometimes it, you, you, I guess you might be skeptical, but actually it does add quite a lot. There's certain details you see and you think, oh, yeah, that, that was in the book, but it wasn't in the original release. Oh, yeah. I mean, go and see the extended versions, please, of, of, of any film. You know, I mean, there was even a, a director's cut came out recently with Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, uh, with, with scenes that ended up on the cutting room floor put back in my, my favorite example of this is that they um they recently released a blu-ray of uh, the good the bad and the ugly which is my favorite western as people will know if they've read my book and they found missing scenes but they were missing the dialogue they were missing the soundtrack these missing scenes oh. so they called clint eastwood and some of the actors who are still alive back in and unfortunately some of the actors have died so they called in impressionists and you can actually, as you watch the film, you can actually hear the difference in the voices. Clint Eastwood is clearly, his voice is clearly older, you know? Yeah. But they've inserted them back in. And um, I think it's great when, when they do that because, you know, it's the way the director wanted us to see the film originally, you know? Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, go and see these older films on the big screen, people, because it's a magic experience. It really is. I saw a couple of years ago The Wizard of Oz back on the big screen. And I saw, I noticed something in that that I mean, I've seen that. It was the first film I ever saw, and I've seen it dozens of times. I'd never noticed that when they are entering 
the haunted forest to go and rescue Dorothy, I'd never noticed before the scarecrow is carrying a pistol. Yeah, I'd never seen that. I'd seen that from dozens and dozens and dozens of times. I see it on the big screen. And I came home and I got my Blu-ray out and I put it on. And yes, there's the pistol. <laughs> and you think, where in all of Oz did he get a pistol? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently what happened was all the other characters were, were carrying something. And Ray Bolger, who was playing with the scarecrow, said, I want to carry something. And a stagehand ran onto a nearby set where they were filming a Western, <laughs> grabbed a pistol and gave it to him. But in the very next shot, the pistol just disappeared. It's not there. That's interesting. <laughs> Notice that seeing it back on the big screen again. Yeah. Yeah. And oftentimes they do remaster old films, don't they? Oh, yes. They, they look good. I mean, so, so many older films now are getting the HD treatment. Mm. Um, good, Bad and the Ugly, for example, is, is, is what I mentioned, got the HD treatment. Raiders of the Lost Ark is, has been released in HD. The age of so many, many, many films. The one I'm waiting for, uh, which apparently is coming next year, is the original Planet of the Apes. Because that's one of my favourite films of all time. Best ending of any film ever, in my opinion, Planet of the Apes. Um, again, I won't spoil it. Um, <laughs> but the, apparently that's coming out in HD next year. So so I am I am looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Thanks so much, Andy. Uh, great to hear about Thanks. some of these films. And uh, nice to sort of chat about some of these older franchises. It is. It is. Should we just go for a couple that people can watch at home this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. Have we great. got time? Um, so, so very quickly... Three films that are available now to watch at home that are, are from this year. First of all, Quiet Place Day One. So again, another alien invasion movie. Um, these are aliens who hear with their ears, so you have to be very quiet around them, otherwise they detect you. Quiet Place Day One is very, very good. Now available to watch at home. Uh, also available to watch at home is a film I think we talked about called Fly Me to the Moon, mm. which is a nineteen it's set in 1969. It's about the moon landing. Did we go to the moon? Didn't we? Did they televise it from a studio? Was it all a setup? Also tells, tells the story of how NASA sold the moon landing to the American public, you know, getting Kellogg's to put the astronauts on the Rice Krispie packets and all the rest of it. And if our astronauts wear a Rolex watch on the moon, will you at Rolex give us some money? That kind of thing. So it's a really, really lovely film. And then there's also a really interesting film available to watch at home now. It's quite long, but it's called Horizon. An American Saga, Part One. Now, this has been written and directed by Kevin Costner, and it's about the very first sort of settlers in the Old West. So it's a Western movie. There, there are Indians in it. Um, there is mining in it. There's all sorts of things going on. It's a, it's three stories, uh, three different stories about three different groups of characters, but it all comes together at the end. Now, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It is called Horizon and an American Saga Part 1. Part 2 was supposed to have been out this month, but unfortunately we're not going to get to see it because in America, Part 1, surprisingly, didn't make enough money. So same with the Italian job. We, we didn't get a sequel to the Italian job because it didn't make enough money. We're not getting a sequel to Horizon um, because it didn't make enough money. But it is available to watch at home. If you like Westerns, I mean, if you like Westerns, have a look at Horizon and American Saga Part 1, because I thought it was terrific. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Andy. Thanks. Some good films Great to watch question. over the weekend. And uh, as you're saying, you know, uh, going to cinema is quite a magical experience. I haven't been very much, actually, maybe right. a handful of times across my lifetime. But, you know, e even with uh, modern home cinema uh, experiences that you can have, big TVs and surround sound systems, it's never going to quite beat a cinema no. trip, is it? No, I, I mean, I, I was just checking. I've, I've been 72 times this year oh, wow. alone. Um, but then, you know, I, I write film reviews for Sorted Magazine. So do check out sortedmag.com, folks. Continue mm. to pray for our editor, Steve Legg, who's battling with cancer. Um, and, yeah, as you say, when the when those lights go down, I mean, I mentioned this in the, the Tell the Story in the introduction in, in my book, Confessions of a Christian Film Critic. The very first time film I saw the cinema was The Wizard of Oz. And um, to me, every time I go to the cinema now, I, I get excited. I mean, the film may be absolute rubbish, the film may be terrible, the film may be really good. But the moment those lights go down, the certificate appears, genuinely, every single time, and 72 times this year, I get excited because I'm about to go back to Oz. I'm about to 
meet characters, new characters. I'm about to have a new adventure. I'm about to see something I haven't experienced before. And cinema can do that. I mean, I love the theatre. But cinema literally can take you anywhere, anytime, any place. You can meet, you know, historical figures. Mm. I mean, there's a great line in Only Fools and Horses, which you may or may not remember, where tr the character Trigger says, uh, you know that bloke Gandhi? He made one great movie and you never heard from him again, you know. Um, so you can meet historical figures. You can, you can, you can go to other planets, you know. So, um, yeah. Go yeah, and tomorrow is a good day to go because it is half price it is national cinema day tomorrow and you know a number of cine worlds have closed down this year um and other cinemas are closing so you know get out and support your local cinema take the kids to see you know harold and the purple crayon or inside out 2 or even borderlands which is a stupid silly sci-fi <laughs> but you know film um take yourself off to see alien or or whatever uh, and support local cinemas because you know I often talk to the staff at my local, and they are living in fear of their jobs at the moment. Actually, mm. yeah. So yeah. there you go. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Andy. Thank you, Nathan. Great to see you. Have a Thank good day. you. God bless you, and God bless Pure. Here at Pure Twenty Four Seven Radio, we have had the privilege of speaking to some amazing people with amazing stories. So I was already doing the work of an evangelist. And then I discovered that there was a term for it. And then I realized, well, I, I really wanted to learn more about the Bible and Christianity. So I went to theological college. Most people think that my life as a marine biologist was spent riding on the back of a dolphin into the sunset. That's and, my view. <laughs> yeah, I, I did that ne never. <laughs> <laughs> Been on the road 35 years, man and boy, doing magic and comedy to communicate the gospel. When I started off in 88, I was doing escapology. I kind of took that on from a friend of mine called Pete Gilbert, who was a real pioneer in creative communication. If you have missed any of these interviews or would like to hear them again, you can simply head over to our catch up section at www.pure247radio.org. That's www.pure247radio.org. <laughs>